In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use Affinity Designer to create these simple shapes using the vector-based tools in the Designer Persona. Before we get started though, be sure to subscribe to my mailing list to get over 200 free design templates, including logos, avatars, infographics, textures, and a whole bunch more. As a subscriber, you will be the first to receive the free templates that I send out each month. And with that out of the way, we will get started. So the first thing I'm gonna show you how to draw is this simple heart icon. We're gonna start with the simplest design and work our way up in, dip in difficulty. So this will be the easiest one. I'm gonna come over here into a new document and I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and I will just click and drag on the canvas to draw a rectangle. And I wanna make the size of this. I'm gonna come over here to the transform menu and I'm gonna change this to 300 wide by 600 high. There we go. And now I want to round the corners of this rectangle. So I'll come up here to this corner slider. Let me click on that and bring this slider all the way to the right. And we now have a rounded rectangle. And I'm gonna click this button that says convert to curves. And then I'll take the selection tool. I'll come over here to the layers menu. I wanna right click on this object in the layers menu and go to duplicate. And I will rotate that around using this button right here that says rotate counterclockwise. So now we have like this cross-like design. So let me select both of these objects. I'm just gonna make them black so I can see them better. And I'm gonna grab the shape builder tool, which is over here. And I wanna choose the subtract option at first. And I'm gonna click on these two items to get rid of them. And then I will choose the addition option and I will click and drag a line going through those two or those three parts right there. And now I'll grab my selection tool and I just wanna rotate this around. So I'm gonna grab this handle right here and rotate this uh, clockwise. And I'm gonna hold my shift key while I do that. So I'll bring this over one, two, three. And now we have an, an upright heart like that. Now the problem with this object is when I click on it, you'll notice the bounding box is rotated as well. We're gonna reset the bounding box by going to select and choosing cycle selection box. And then we wanna perm uh, make that permanent by going to select and choosing set selection box. So now every time you click on this object, the rotation or the bounding box will be reset. Now let's go over how to create this waving flag icon. So I'll come back over here into my document. I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool again, and I'm gonna click and drag to create a long vertical rectangle like that. This is gonna represent the flagpole. And I wanna give this rounded corners as well. So I'll click on the corners, drop down and make this, or bring this all the way to the right click the Convert to Curves button, and then I'm gonna create another rectangle over here to the right. So I'll grab the rectangle tool again. I'm gonna click and drag to draw a rectangle like that. And I wanna make these corners only slightly rounded. So let me make them just a tiny bit rounded. You don't even have to do this. I just think for effect, it, it makes a nice consistent look if they have slightly rounded corners. Convert to Curves. And now I'm gonna place some kind of design on the inside here. You can use whatever design you'd like, but for this demonstration, I'm gonna hold a click over my shapes tool and look for the star option. So I'll click on the star tool right here. And I wanna make sure I have this setting in place, five points. I'm gonna click and drag to create a star and then I'll hold my shift key so that it creates it in a good proportion without distorting it. And I'll also take this node right here and bring that out a little bit just to make that star a little wider on the inside. It helps to see it better when it's in that negative space of the flag. And I will take this now with my selection tool. Let's convert this to curves by clicking the button that says convert to curves. If you don't have a convert to curves button in your toolbar, you can always just go to layer and select convert to curves. And that's another way you can do that. And I'll just place this over the flag here. Let me make this a lighter shade so I can see it. And let me make this a little bigger. I'm gonna hold Shift and Command, or actually I'm gonna click and drag and then hold Shift and Command and then scale it up like that. If you're using Windows, that would be Shift and Control. And with this selected, I'm gonna hold Shift and click on the rectangle behind it so I have them both selected. And I'm gonna click on my alignment menu. And I wanna make sure I have last selected chosen from this dropdown. And I just wanna make sure I have it aligned vertically and horizontally like that. And with them still selected, I'm just gonna come over here to the Boolean operations and choose the subtract option and click on that. And now we've subtracted that star from the center. So now let's create a waving effect to make this look like a waving flag. So I'm gonna come over here to the layers menu with this object selected. You wanna have the rectangle selected, of course. I'll come down here. If you notice, we have this warp icon. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna choose quad. 
And once we choose quad, we can just take the edge, the top left edge of this flag and bring that up. And then we can take this edge and bring this down. And we can click on each of these nodes right here to get these handles, which will allow us to shape this a little better. So let me adjust that as well. And I'll come down here and do the same thing. I wanna bring this edge up and I'm gonna click on this node to get this handle. I'm gonna bring that up uh, about as far as I did the top one. And then I'll come over here and do the same thing. I'm gonna bring this one down. We wanna match the contours uh, from the top to the bottom. So however much you use on the top, try to use the same amount on the bottom. And there we go. And once you're happy with how that looks, you can apply that. You can make it permanent by clicking the Convert to Curves button. And there we go. Just like that, we have created a waving flag icon. Now let's have a look at how we can create this sword icon. So I'll come back into my document. I'm gonna hold a click over the shapes tool and this time I'm looking for polygon. And for the sides, I wanna make sure I have six in there. So go ahead and type in six and press enter. And then click and drag and then hold shift to draw your polygon or it's technically a hexagon. And I'm gonna convert this to curves as well. Let's click the button up here that says convert to curves. And with the nodes tool, I'm gonna to take these nodes down here in the bottom and I'm gonna click and drag them down. I'm gonna hold my shift key while I do that to bring them down. And let me take these nodes and bring them up. Again, holding shift the whole time. And I'm gonna take these nodes down here and I wanna scale them down. So I'm gonna come up here to where it says transform and I wanna click on this button that says transform mode. And when I click on that, we now have a bounding box around those selected nodes and we could take these nodes right here and hold command and shift and scale that down. Again, that would be control and shift on Windows and we could scale that down like that. Now let's turn off transform mode. And I'm gonna take these two nodes right here and I'm just gonna bring them down a little bit, about that far. And then I'm gonna grab my circle tool, my circles and ellipse tool, and I'm gonna click and drag to draw a circle. I'm gonna hold the shift key so we get a nice round circle. Let me grab the selection tool and I wanna put this towards the bottom of the sword that we're creating. And I'm gonna hold shift and scale this up or down as needed. I want it about that big relative to the other object. And I'm gonna select both of these and I just wanna make sure I have them centered. So I'm gonna click on the align center button. And if you notice your sword's a little distorted, like my sword's a little, little too wide up top, I think. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into the nodes tool and select these two nodes. And I'll go back into transform mode right there. And I'm just gonna scale that down. I'm gonna hold my command key while I scale them so that it uh, scales from both sides. If you're not holding command or control, it only scales from one side. So I'm gonna hold that command key so we scale symmetrically. Windows, that would be control. Turn off transform mode. Maybe I'll bring this down a little bit. At this point, I'm just making some minor adjustments to make sure everything looks good. And I'm even gonna make this circle a little bigger now. So you may have to go through here and adjust this as you're creating it. It's pretty difficult to get it right on the first try. And now we're just gonna create the top part of the handle right here. So let me grab the rectangle tool. I'll click and drag and draw a rectangle over this portion. This is gonna represent the handle right here. And I want to give two of these corners rounded corners. So to do that, I'm gonna go to, first I'm gonna convert this to curves by clicking the button that says convert to curves. And then I'll grab the corners tool, which is located over here. And I'm gonna click and drag over these two bottom corners and I'm just gonna click and drag them in like that. And then we have rounded corners for this, just for this bottom portion of the rectangle. And then I'll click on bake appearance, which is basically the same as convert to curves. And I just wanna position this where it ought to be about that far in. Hold your shift key and scale it up and down as needed. I'm gonna make mine about that big. And again, I'm gonna hold shift and click on the object beneath it and make sure it's centered by going to align and clicking on align center. And I'll just move this down a little bit. And now I'm just gonna put some space in between here. If you notice on my design, I put a little bit of space between the handle and the rest of the sword. So I'll put some space in there. Uh, let me move that down. I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and click and drag to draw a rectangle right above there. I'm gonna make this rectangle white and I wanna position this beneath the other object. So I'm gonna come over here to the layers menu, click and drag this down so it goes beneath the other rectangle that we just created and then size this accordingly. So let me zoom out to see how it looks. That's a little too big, I'm gonna make it a little smaller. Okay, I think that looks better. Once you're happy with how it looks, just click on the rectangle, then hold shift and click on the object beneath it and click on the subtract button up here. And now we can click on all of these objects up here and unify them together by clicking the add button. 
And now we have just created, let me make this black to match the other icons we created. And just like that, we've created a sword icon. And for the final part of this lesson, we'll be going over how to create this wine glass icon. So let's come back over here into the document. I'm gonna grab the circles and ellipses tool. I'm gonna to click and drag to draw an ellipse, an elongated ellipse vertically. And let me grab my selection tool. I'm gonna to come over here to the transform menu and I want the width of this to be 300 and the height to be 600. And then I'm gonna come over here to the layers menu, right click that and go to duplicate. And I'll make this one a lighter shade just so I can see it better. And I wanna make the height of this one to be 100. So I'll just type in 100 here and there we go. And let's do this. Let's click on the original ellipse and let's center it on the page vertically and horizontally. And then we'll do the same thing with this one. We'll just center this vertically and horizontally and then it's aligned as we need it. Now I'm gonna click and drag over both objects. We'll go back to our shape builder tool. I wanna choose the subtract option and then just click on this top portion to get rid of it. And then I'll choose the add option and click and drag a line going through those two to combine those together like that. And now I'm gonna hold shift and click and drag to move this up. Now it's time to create the stem in the base of the wine glass. So let me grab my ellipse tool. I'm gonna to come down here and click and drag to draw an ellipse about that big. For reference, the size is about 200. I'll just type in the numbers 200 by, let's just round up and say 60. And we'll convert that to curves. And I wanna take this top node up here and click and drag this up and hold shift while I do that so it locks onto the vertical axis. And I wanna make sure I have this centered vertically on the page. And now we're gonna create a, a rectangle to be the stem going between these two objects. So let me click off of that to deselect it. I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool, click and drag to draw a rectangle about that size. And if you need to change the width of it, just come over here and then hold control or command and then just click and drag it like that. You can make it bigger or smaller as needed. I'm gonna make this about that big. And once again, I wanna make sure I have this centered on the page. So let me grab my selection tool. I will click on align center. And I'm gonna click and drag over all three of these and unify them together by clicking add. And the final step would be to round these corners in here to make it look more fluid and natural. So let me grab the corner tool, which is over here. I'm gonna select these two nodes right here and then just click and drag them out like that to give this a rounded, make those corners a rounded transition like that. And then I'll come over here, select these nodes and do the same thing. I'll make those a little rounded as well. And we can zoom out and you may have to adjust this as needed. I'm gonna make this a little longer or a little wider like that. And once you're finished, you can click the bake appearance button and bring the color up to black and there we go. That's how you can use uh, the shapes to create a wine glass icon. So that should do it for this tutorial. Hopefully that gives you a good introduction to how to create basic shapes with Affinity Designer. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.